Hello everyone, welcome. Today we will be talking a little bit about the derivative of sine and why exactly is it equal to cosine in the first place. I mean, maybe you're watching this alongside your teacher's notes or lectures, whatever, right? Or maybe you're just watching this for fun, which in that case I applaud you. Um, but this might seem like one of those rules that you kind of just have to memorize in calculus, but there's actually a pretty deep intuition behind it. You take a closer look, right? Before we do that, let's try and prove this is true in the first place, right? Using the limit definition of a derivative, right? So then f of x plus h minus f of x over h, right? And if we were to use sine of x in this case, right, the limit as h approaches zero of sine of x plus h minus sine of x over h, right? And we can use our sine addition formula to rearrange this, which would give us sine of x times cosine of h plus cos of x times sine of h, right? Minus sine of x, don't forget about that. All of this over h, which we can again rearrange to sine of x times cosine of h minus 1, all of this over h, right? This is just coming from this expression here, right? And this expression, we're just factoring out that sine of x plus cosine of x times sine of h over h. Now, in this case, we can use two famous limits to simplify this further, right? The limit as h approaches 0 of sine of h over h. Maybe you've seen this before, maybe you haven't, right? Um, you can prove this in multiple ways. You can prove this using a squeeze theorem. You can prove this using um, L'Hopital's rule, but uh, for now, that's not really the point of the video, right? That would be a separate video on its own, right? The limit as h approaches 0 of sine of h over h is 1. You're just going to have to trust me on that. <laughs> um, the limit as h approaches 0 of cosine of h minus 1 over h is going to be zero, okay? So as a result, this in turn would approach zero. This would approach zero, which would end up canceling out this term entirely. And this would end up approaching one, right? So the final limit is going to be equal to cosine of x, okay? So algebraically this works, right? But this why does this make sense geometrically? For that, we need a unit circle. Let's say we have a function a of theta is equal to sine of theta, right? So you're going theta radians around this circle right here, theta radians, and that would correspond to a height of sine of theta, right? The height of this point on the terminal arm here, or the y value of the coordinate, you could say as well. Well, what happens as we change theta by a really small amount, right? Change theta by maybe an infinitesimally small amount, an infinitely small amount d theta. Well, that would correspond to an infinitely small change in sine of theta, right? So d sine of theta. Well, an infinitely small change in d sine of theta, okay? All right? So you could draw a little triangle right here, right? It turns out that this angle here, this angle theta here, is the same as this angle here, right? So this is also theta. Well, what exactly does a derivative mean in this case? Coming back to a of theta, right? The derivative of this is an infinitely small change in sine of theta, an infinitely small change in sine of theta over an infinitely small change in theta, right? Or more formally, as the limits as the change approaches zero. So d sine of theta, in this case, looks a lot like the adjacent side for this angle theta right here. So adjacent, right? And d theta, looks a lot like the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle. Well, what ratio does this turn out to be? This turns out to be cosine 
of theta. D sine of theta and D over D theta would correspond to D cosine of theta. The derivative of sine of x can also be estimated using graphs. All these graphs aren't perfect. They serve as a good visual here. Right? Let's say I draw a tangent line at x is equal to 0. Tangent line at x is equal to 0. Slope of this tangent line looks around 1, like looks about like about 1, right? And as a result, cosine of x is equal to 1 at x is equal to 0. What about this horizontal tangent line right here? Right? This horizontal tangent line has a slope of 0 because it's parallel to the x-axis, right? And as a result, cosine of x is equal to 0 at pi over 2. Well, what about x is equal to pi, right? Let's draw another tangent line. That's a very terrible tangent line, but it will suffice, right? The slope of this line right here looks around negative 1, right? It looks about negative 1. And as a result, cosine of x at x is equal to pi is negative 1. For intervals where sine of x is increasing, sine of x increasing, cosine of x will be positive. And for intervals where sine of x is decreasing, maybe here perchance, right? Intervals where sine of x is decreasing from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, right? Cosine of x will be negative, right? And just, as you can see right here.